Hi, welcome to Long Lost Friends. I'm Elizabeth Eve King. And I'm Andrea Goyan. Today, we are so excited to have Koshik joining us. Koshik is an award-winning writer, actor, and filmmaker. Born and raised in India, Koshik holds a PhD in human genetics. He's known for his roles in Criminal Minds, Beyond Borders, The Story of God with Morgan Freeman, and many, many more. A short film, Junk DNA, that Koshik wrote and starred in won a prestigious Remy Award. Currently, he's busy writing a curry western he'll be starring in, and he's a long practitioner of yoga and has been teaching for many years. Welcome, Koshik. Welcome. And we always like to start by saying, do you have any pets that you can share with us? Yes, sure. And thank you for the uh, amazing introduction. I really appreciate it. Oh, sure. Elizabeth and Andrea. Okay, I'm going to show you my my pet. I have a hippo. <laughs> wow. <laughs> He's does, my does friend. Hippo, does he have a name? His name is Hippie. Oh, Hippie Hi Hippo. Yeah, Hippie the Hippo. How old is he? <laughs> Hippie is two years old. Oh, he's a baby. Yeah. That's Hippie why he's the so Hippo. small. That's why right. he's so small for a right. hippo. Right, he's very small. <laughs> you can see him. Right. Does he help you write? <laughs> oh, yes, absolutely. I mean, he's my moral support. When I'm writing, he's always beside me. That is Very wonderful. Nice. Look, looking at me. Oh. oh, yes. He obviously loves you very much. <laughs> he does. Certainly a lot more obedient than my animals. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> so you started out as a geneticist, and we're going to talk about that a bit later. But what we really um, am, are fascinated to learn you have made like from nothing. You wrote the story, then you start in it, presumably rounded up all the actors, got the set. How do you make, say I, I, I decide, okay, I'd like to write a short film and make one. What do I do? Can you help me with yeah. steps? Sure. So I will give you an example of um, my short film, Junk DNA, <clears throat> that I wrote. Um, starred in it and I produced. Um, so yeah, I, I wrote down a couple of uh, points that um, you must do when uh, you're producing a short film. And I'm guessing generally short films are not high budget. So budget is pretty limited and uh, you have to make sure that you are still delivering a quality product. Koshik, before uh, you go into that, can I just ask, do you have a link available to that short film that we can put out for yes, people? Uh, Junk DNA is is on my on my YouTube channel. Okay, and so we'll provide a the, link below. We'll right. have a link below. You can just quit, click on it. I will mention that it's on my uh, YouTube channel, and you can see the link below. Okay, fantastic. All right, sorry to interrupt, but I wanted to make sure people could could look at it if they yes, wanted. Yes, yes, yes. All right. my films are on on my YouTube channel. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> um, so back so to the if, steps. Yes. If somebody wants to uh, make a short film, and I'm sure the generally the budget for a short film is very very limited, so you have to be mindful of a um, of a bunch of factors, and have to be you know very meticulous about your planning to make sure that you are um, delivering a quality product. So I will give you a couple of points. The number one is you need to have a full script. You cannot start any uh, pre-production or a, a, you know any planning unless you have the script ready, almost locked up. It's never fully locked up because there are always you know small changes. That is fine, but as long as you have a, a, a full-length script, which is about maybe seven to ten uh, pages because uh, generally an ideal length for a short film is about 10 minutes. Um, I mean, it should, gen it should not generally go more than 10 minutes, but the ideal length is about seven or so, okay, for a short film. Again, these are just general understanding. There is nothing written, no written rule for that. So if you have a, a final script, seven to 10 pages, uh, you know, looked up many times, that's the number one. 
Number two is you need to break down your script. <clears throat> you need to go line by line or scene by scene and make sure you understand that each scene is taking place in what location. So beside every scene, you make your points or you can also, you know, put them down on a doc document or something that, okay, uh, number one location is this, number two location is this. For scene one, I need these two characters or three characters, whatever. Scene two, I need, you know, these two characters, three characters, and these are, these are my props. Um, the locations, um, uh, the, the characters and the props, all these things you need, you must note down scene by scene. So you have a complete breakdown of your script. So you know exactly what are the things you need, locations, actor-wise and prop-wise, um, and also uh, also costume. What kind of costumes the characters are wearing in every single scene. You have a full breakdown of that. And then the next thing, very next thing you need to do, you need to fix a date. Okay, you need to, like mentally, I'm, I'm saying, mentally you fix a date, maybe a month later or something, you know, that... That date is my shooting date, depending on your own availability at that moment, okay? Because you are the filmmaker. That, okay, or maybe you can keep a, a few dates, two or three dates in mind that, uh, you know, I can only do in the weekend. So uh, that Saturday and Sunday, I can I can uh, shoot the film or I can only do in the weekdays. So that, that Wednesday and Thursday, I can do the uh, shooting. So the moment you have the date in your mind, the very next thing you have to do, you have to book the locations, okay? Many times when the short film is very tight budgeted, we try to get locations. Actual location is always, could be pretty expensive, okay? So you are trying to find a location that is either free or almost like a very, very small amount you have to pay. So you need to reach out to your network. You need to talk to different people. You're like, I, I need a house which uh, maybe I can do in my uh, in my friend's uh, apartment building. That looks type of the setup that I have in my mind. Then you reach out to your, to your friend and he's like, okay, fine, I'm free on that Saturday. You can come and shoot. And then you pro probably you have a bar scene. Then you have to reach out to your, your contacts and see who, um, who has an access to a bar that you can get for a small amount of money. And then maybe you get three or four leads, you call them and you find out, okay, that bar is not that expensive and I can book it for that particular day. So the locations, you book them for the dates that you have in, in your mind. You are almost halfway through, you are, you are all set. Locations are booked, you, are, you are definitely know you are shooting on those dates, okay? The very next thing is you have to um, cast your characters. So you put out an audition notice um, either you reach out to your friends that you have in your mind that maybe they will be good fit for the characters or you put out a audition notice on actor success or LA casting and then you mention that th that is my shooting date. I'm filming on this date and this date. So everybody knows in advance and people who are available for those dates are auditioning and you know they are going ahead with the project. But the dates are not changing no matter what. You're fixed with the dates. So I have um, just a quick question. You mentioned LA casting and what actors something that I didn't actors know. access. Yeah, these are the two access. most popular actors access and LA casting. Yeah, I believe they are probably used uh, in New York too. Right. Yeah. So the moment your um, casting is done, and you do the casting. Uh, let, um, uh, informing everybody that that's my those are my uh, uh, filming dates. Okay, your cast is booked. Then you uh, book your uh, crew, and the key crew will be the very first thing that you will be booking. The DP and your first AD. These are the the critical uh, crew that will actually help you get through the the you know actual hump. Okay, so these are the very critical positions you. And again, if the budget is limited, you are trying to find somebody that fits in your budget at the same time who is available on those two dates. At that moment, the date is not changing. You are only considering folks who are available for those dates that you're filming. And then you have to take in consideration um, that how many, uh, uh, how much they are charging because your budget is probably limited. Okay, so you book your uh, key crew first 
and then you book any additional crew members you, you need. Um, right after the key crew is booked, then you book any uh, of your additional crew members that you might need, maybe a couple of PAs. One PA will um, you know, generally take care of the entire set, whatever is needed. Anybody needs uh, you know, hot coffee or something. Um, uh, and, and maybe the other PA will take care of crafty and lunch. Um, and you also need to book hair and makeup people. You also need to book um, your grip and gaffer. Um, but you just have to make sure that they're available for your particular date and they fit in your budget. So they all come so, towards the end part. Where do you find, where do you reach out for crew members? I mean, do you have a, I mean, it's someone who's just starting out. Where might they reach out? So uh, for crew reaching out, uh, and that's very much depends on your networking. I'm a part of a industry group called uh, The Table that's uh, based all over America, but um, they have a big component in Los Angeles. Um, we have regular uh, weekly meetings and there are about, I think, 3,500 members, um, you know, all over, uh, spread out all over America. Um, group like that, or you know somebody who's a part of a group like that, you shoot out an email. I'm looking for um, uh, one grip, one gaffer and two PAs and this is my budget. Uh, and then people will respond to you. And then, you know, based on their experience and their availability and their budget, you can book people. If not, then the other option is you have to at least know some people who work in the industry and you reach, reach out to them. And hopefully each of them will have at least five or six contacts they can reach out to. And that's how the, the network will spread. And, and then you will find people. And might uh, a film school too also be a yeah. place to? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. If you're a part of a film school, that's a huge uh, a, a benefit. Um, and from if, your, if you're yeah. not, because that was my question, Elizabeth, if you're not part of a film school, but like, for instance, I have a film school walking distance from my house, could, would you ever consider reaching out to some of those students? So I have got hair and makeup people. I have booked hair and makeup people from a school in Burbank. It's called MUD. Um, that's a very wow. popular hair and makeup uh, school in Burbank. Um, and somebody told me about it and my budget was very limited. So I wanted to find somebody who is maybe a student mm -hmm. and looking for some exposure and credit. So I uh, found some contact. I uh, uh, sent an email to them saying that, hey, I'm shooting this uh, 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 short film on this date. And this is my IMDb profile just for them to, you know, make sure, you know, know that I'm a genuine filmmaker. And um, this is my budget. I'm looking to book uh, two people, one for hair, one for makeup. Will you guys be able to help me? They immediately... Yeah. Sent me out, uh, sent me a couple of uh, options, a, a few people, yeah. And just uh, like providing IMB credit, that I assume also is, you know, something that maybe you would, could do that instead of, if you don't have any funds, you know, just that they'll get credit, IMB credit for it. Yes, yes. Many times, um, many like sh short films or student films will uh, state that, uh, I will not be able to pay you, but I can give you a copy and credit. That's that's very uh, common. Although, I mean, I'm sure everybody tries to avoid that. It's not a great practice. We all know that. But unfortunately, if we have extremely tight budget, then there is no other option than that. But I generally try to pay at least some amount, you know, uh, to my cast and crew. It just makes me feel better. Well, that's wonderful. I have a, just one quick question uh, about when you, how many crew, if uh, if you can, ideally, how many crew would you have? Um, so the minimum crew you must have will be a DP, um, a sound guy, um, um, a first AD. A what? I'm first, sorry. First AD, first assistant director. Okay. Um, and then at least one person for um, grip, one person who is a gaffer, at least one PA. 
this is the minimum requirement of a very tight uh, uh, set. But you definitely need at least these people to make sure that your set runs very smoothly during your. And then you were saying hair and makeup too, right? And oh, absolutely. Sorry, I forgot to mention. No, that. no, no. It's, it was a lot to remember. I had written it hair, down. hair and makeup. Um, sometimes um, people do combine hair and makeup. Mm -hmm. um, generally not. Generally, people always like to book one person for hair, one person for for makeup because they these are two kind of different specialities. But sometimes, if the if the budget is very tight and um, if there is not much, uh, you know, difficult type of hair needed, then people will only book one person who is makeup person and ask the the actors to make sure that they're they are fine. They they come ready with their hair, you know. For men, it's very easy. For women, um, it is it's different. But a lot of the actresses are very good with their hairs, so they will come to the set being completely ready. Okay, but they still need some makeup because during the entire uh, day, you need to make sure that they are not looking shiny, they are not looking tired, they are not looking wrinkled or whatever. So, a makeup person has to be there on the set, no matter what. Oh, what about a costume person? Now, is that a separate or would Costume person is always separate, but costume is not um, in a tight budget short film, extremely essential, I would say. Uh, now, again, I'm sure there are people who would argue with me, but uh, if your budget is very tight, you can definitely cut that off. Why? Because let's say it's a, um, it's a cowboy scene, okay? And you have already specified the... Um, the wardrobe with your actors okay so i mean and you do those things during your pre-production you have meetings with the with the actors with the with the crew so either you have bought the um the, the cowboy attire for your actor and your actor actress or you have already asked them hey what do you have and they're like i have this thing you know i have that uh, cowboy hat and whatever and you are like you are happy with the with the wardrobe and they come to the set with the wardrobe or, or they come on the on set and then they put on their wardrobe. So they look the way you want them to look. So in that case, uh, you know, you can cut that down. If your pre-production is very meticulous, very, you are good with that, you can definitely cut the, uh, the wardrobe out of your, your budget if your budget is very limited. Cool. And okay, I'm just gonna go through the, the list of how to make a short film so we can yep, finish it. We're with you. Okay, so once the, the additional crew is also booked, then uh, your next step is pre-production slash, slash rehearsal. So pre-production will be just making sure you have, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, you have your call time ready, you know what would be your tentative call time on the day one and day two, and around how many hours you are shooting, which is generally probably 10 to 12 hours, um, what time is your lunch? You know, small budget uh, short films, they buy crafty on their own beforehand. So you need to make sure that you are buying, you know, whatever fruits and um, there, there'll be coffee on that day and how you are going to get coffee to, to the set, hot coffee, or how you will make it. So those logistics, you have to figure them out all on pre-production. Um, during lunchtime, if anybody has any dietary restrictions, you uh, communicate with them, you make the, you know, write them down all, uh, you know, you know exactly what you are off, uh, you are providing for lunch and how the lunch is coming to the set. So you put put your order uh, in advance or you, you uh, assign a PA who will go and pick up the order, things like that, okay? You make all those plannings beforehand. Um, uh, all the wardrobes, wardrobes are ready. If they need to be ironed, you know, steamed or whatever, they are, you know, ready to go. All your props, you have a list of all your props. Either you find them through your network, through your uh, from your friends, or you buy them yourself. A lot of the times, if you buy them uh, online in advance, they're not that expensive. But again, that needs very good planning. If you walk into a store, you, you don't know what, price you have to pay or you know like you know you cannot you cannot uh, uh, research and find the cheaper options but if you have if you're doing it in advance you have those options you can go to a multiple stores or you can do online research and see where you are getting a better price you so all those things need advanced planning 
And then you also make a schedule with your actor's availability for rehearsals. Rehearsals are extremely important because you need to make sure your actors are on top of the game. There is no time for them to come on set and then figure out their, uh, their chemistry between two actors or an actor and actress or whatever. There is no time. They come on set completely on top of their game, maybe one or two rehearsals, boom, you start shooting because time is so limited and you're paying for a, for a location and you absolutely, ca you cannot afford to go over time even for two minutes. You know that in your mind. So that's why you do those, you know, rehearsal schedules. You you make a schedule uh, talking to your actors and, uh, you know, you, you have a location either in your house or somebody somewhere else, you find a, a small theater, local theater, and you do those rehearsal sessions and you know that your actors are on top of the game. Wow. Okay. And the very next thing after that, that is actual filming. So everything is set on the day you, you are on set and you finish your filming. Now the filming part is, you know, many people who are not in the, in the industry, they think that is the majority of it. That's what, oh my God, that's the filming is taking place. They're shooting. That is probably in my mind is uh, one of the minor things. Okay. A lot of the other things are way more important than that, than that. When you are on set, your mind is way more relaxed because a lot of those things have you have finished and it, it is the whole project is narrowing down, down, down. On set, everything is so well prepared, well set. It just, you know, uh, flows smoothly. Only uh, uh, if you have done all the uh, preparation before. And that one or two months of preparation is the cha chaotic time, is when your head is jammed with, like multiple things, but as the time is progressing, you are, you are, you know, you are completing, you're executing your, your uh, uh, assignments. And on the shooting date, shooting day, you have come down to like only one task of just shooting the scenes. So what kind of, um, are you, what kind of camera equipment do you need if you're doing a short film? Do you, I mean, can people do things on their phones now or? Absolutely. So, I mean, then, what are you doing with it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I mean, uh, yeah, if you are shooting on your phone, then you can cut down, uh, you know, uh, some grip and gra gaffer. Uh, but of course, a, a lot of people do shoot on their iPhones and stuff nowadays. I absolutely do not prefer it. Um, not for any technical reason. Probably the footage from an iPhone is as good as, you know, from a high quality uh, camera. I'm just a bit old school. I, I want to feel mentally and visually that I'm in a filming zone. I'm not taping a, a video for Facebook, you know? So, I mean, I don't prefer that, but that so absolutely you, does. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. So then are you renting the equipment? Is that part of it? Too, yeah, then? so gen generally speaking, uh, most of the DPs will come their equipment. Oh, okay. Yeah, so okay, DP yeah. always generally, yeah, the DP will always come with the equipment. But if they don't have an equipment, the rate you are, the, the the amount you are paying to a DP, if the person has to rent it out, but a lot of them have their own uh, equipment. Okay. And if you um, did have to rent it, or if you're paying somebody who has their equipment, what's what's a you know a, you're on a really low budget. So if you can get it for free, you want to, but you can't. So how much? Can you, is there um, a renting the equipment is never separate. I don't think anybody pays separately for that. You book a DP. DP, you have the conversation, what kind of equipment you have or you'll be bringing. And majority of them have their own equipment. So they will tell you, I have a, a black magic. I have a, an RE. Okay. So, and that's the equipment you were looking for. I'm not too, uh, deep in in technical things as long as it's a good camera it's a you know um, um high quality uh, image I'm... so the the film that we shot junk dna that was on black magic and black magic is generally a high quality camera so if the dp feels confident and the dp i'm booking that's more important to me 
you know, I have, let's say, an option of three or four, and I know them personally, I'll have a conversation with them, and I will see their work, what kind of work they have done, and they're like, see this film, I I will be bringing to your set. I'm like, oh, wow, that looks awesome. Okay, so I would like to work with you, you know. So that's my I mean, approach. I I like to go uh, with the DP, the person and uh, his or her skill set, and the camera they are bringing. And is that the same for the sound person? Do they bring their own equipment as yes, well? Absolutely. Sound person will also bring their own equipment. So the uh, the, the 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 pay you are paying, a uh, salary you are paying to the DP, um, that takes care of the person's uh, you know labor salary and the equipment as well. The same for the sound guy as well. Um, and lights. You pay a salary and then they come with their sound equipment. And lights? Lights, a lot of the times, uh, the DPs will have their own light. Majority of the times. So again, if you need light, then the rate will probably increase a little more. Okay. Uh, sometimes if you're shooting on natural light, you need a, you probably don't need much light. Um, you need maybe one or two basic lights and they're like, I have the light and they will not charge you extra for that because there's a good possibility they wouldn't need to uh, take the light out. Maybe a reflector will do the job. Um, so yeah, then you can cut down on the lighting budget, but if it's an interior scene um, and maybe the place is a bit, bit uh, dark or something, if it's a bar, the atmosphere has to be darker on the side, but your characters have to be well lit that's a little bit of a complicated job. They need good amount of lighting. And lighting takes you know, time and, and labor. Pulling the actual lights out, hooking them up, and then you know, making sure the person is looking nicely lit up. So all those things, that's why the, then the rate will increase. You know? Yeah. Cool. So I'm at, well, as I'm counting, uh, I'm at number seven where you've got everything and you're now ready to go into shooting mode, right? Right, right. That is correct, number seven. And right after that, like once your uh, your filming is done, the very next thing is post-production. And uh, post-production has a couple of components to it. Um, for the for the you know very basic level work, um, you need an editor who will edit the, the film. You need a um, sound mixer who will, uh, you need a composer who will compose the, the original music for the short film because every film has their own music, okay? And you need a, a sound mixer who will mix the actual sound of the, like object sounds, you know, somebody throwing a rock on, uh, on the wall those sounds and for low budget uh, short films um, many times these sounds um, you don't have to create your own original sound you can you can find these sounds from online sources even from youtube you can find a lot of these sounds but the music has to be composed okay because that gives the the movie the film a different quality and you cannot com compromise on that you need original music so original music and those sounds have to be nicely mixed and the sound mixer does it. So the editor will cut the film, the, uh, the uh, composer will compose the music, the sound mixer will mix the uh, object sound and the uh, original music together. And then everything put together is your final uh, product. So post-production wow. will be the last step, number eight. That's really and then, do you, and then that... do you you go and are you the person who do you oversee the editing because you are the director so you're overseeing it right you're overseeing it so um right when you send the um your footage to the editor uh, you have meeting with the editor you you communicate your vision and many times what I do I share my storyboard with the editor um, storyboard is where you have actually drawn the pictures. This is how, this is my first picture, the, the hero is walking in. Um, a second picture, the hero opens the door or whatever, you know. Uh, so this is how I see the film in my head. And you, like, you can completely give your storyboard to the editor. 
and then so editor. The question, so I'm going to, oh, I was going to backtrack on the storyboard. So the storyboard's done in post pre-production. It's basically what you exactly. take with you to set up all your shots, like you said. So here's the, here's the hero. Here's the hero walking in the door. You have to have that. So that's your template that you're following the day of the shoot. And that's, that's a very the, good point. Isn't that what you need to have, like, right after this? First, you write the script, because, you know, without the script, obviously, there's nothing. But once you have your script, isn't the next thing you need the storyboard? Absolutely. And I forgot to mention that. Okay. We'll add it back in. Yeah. Or that we'll put it in now. It's great. Oh, right. yeah. <laughs> but I mean, in our little yeah. one, two, three, yes. you need the storyboard. Yeah. That will probably go with number two, where I said script breakdown, script breakdown, and and slash uh, storyboarding um, for the filmmaker it's extremely important to have the storyboard very early on okay right after your script you wrote the script and you broke down the script and at the same time you also did the storyboard probably you, you would do the storyboard first and then you will you will do the script breakdown because then you have a nice you can see the how the whole film is flowing and from there, script breakdown will also be easier for you. Mm -hmm. Okay, or it could also be vice versa, however you would like to do. But for the filmmaker to have the storyboard very early on is extremely important. If you don't have it, like you are, you are, you are, you will, you are nowhere near to, you know, your pre-production. It, it's not going to go uh, go forward with the storyboard on the on set. You have it like almost your bible. Okay, by that time you have worked on your storyboard so many times, rehearsal and pre-production and going through the script in your head so many times, you have done those little changes on your storyboard. On, on set, all you should be doing as a filmmaker, a director, following the storyboard. Number one, let's shoot that. Number two, do the setup, let's shoot that. And you were striking that, you were striking those out. Boom, 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 you're doing one after one. So that's the reason uh, wh when you are on set, things are way more easier because everything else in your head has been done long back, you know. That makes sense. That's great. This is right. so, you're so, you're so precise with this. It's really helpful. And I think, I, mean, I think there is a very famous quote from Alfred Hitchcock. I don't remember the exact quotation, but um, I think he said like, um, the easiest part of a filmmaking is when you are on the set. Because everything else, all the work has been already been done. Wow. On set is the easiest part of your job. You're just, you know, you're just following a set routine. And after that, again, I mean, editing is also, post-production is a uh, complicated process, but on set. Now, is there a place where you could go to see storyboards? Like online, where if you looked up storyboards, could you find a bunch of, you know oh yes so absolutely if you if you just google it you will find a lot of storyboard examples um but storyboarding generally we learn in our school um like right now i'm a part of los angeles city college where i take uh you know a filmmaking classes we had to do storyboarding and then you know show it to our teacher who would comment on them and that's how we learned oh, um i i learned storyboarding and back in the days people would draw the pictures you don't don't have to be a good uh, artist, and I'm absolutely not a good uh, painter. Um, so if you're not a good painter, all you do you make stick figures with on your pen on your paper. Uh, there are some very good software available, and there there is also there are also a couple of uh, free software. Um, I don't remember the names very well. I think there is one called Storyboard DG or something like that. I heard that it's a free software, um, but I uh, I have only used like pen and paper. Just for me, the easiest way to do it is just draw them. And I can also make little notes on those, like what's happening. I put some arrows, the, you know, this is how the uh, actor or the actress is walking, you know, things like that, turning on the right side, turning on left side. There, This is where my camera will be, but you can you can do them over a software as well. That's great. Cool. So now we are into post-production. So that's really important. Right. Post-production, like I was saying that you, you will communicate with your editor. This is how I see the film. 
this these are my storyboard and all these footages are there i have shot them all okay but after that i what i like to do editor is also a ki kind of a uh, a mini mini director i would say okay in a way a director i uh, i don't like to influence the editor too much you know uh, uh this sequence exactly just cut them blindly and that's my film i don't like to do that i would sit down with my editor and then explain the whole thing and then let him or her do their job many times when they're actually putting the uh, things together they will think you know what this thing what is i see on storyboard is actually not flowing very well i would rather cut that out reduce the scene by half a minute or or things like that because they are actually seeing the film in front of them it's different than what you have seen in your head and when they actually seeing the whole film so the first cut i i you know i try to i uh, i like to see they are doing their own job although i have we have had the meeting but i i want to see what they come up with and then you'll go back and and check right. then it. then we yeah. then so how exactly long right. So about how long do you plan for post-production to take usually? Again, depending on um, how long the film is, but it's about, let's say, around 10 minutes. Um, I would de definitely try and wrap up the post-production within two months. But again, it okay. could go much longer than that, depending on the availability of your uh, editors, composers, and sound mixers. And, and if you are not, paying a high amount to them, they will probably only work on your project on their free time. And you have to be flexible with that because your budget is limited. So they're like, you know, my only free time is the weekend. Weekdays, I work for this big TV show and that's what pays my bills. So I cannot do your little short film, okay? Because they are doing a favor to you. They are your friends. Um, so they're charging a small amount. So they're like, I can only do in the weekends, but weekends, I have my own household work to do. I can only work four hours every weekend. So if that's how you count, maybe it's a four months job or something. But again, generally speaking, I like to keep in my head about two months. And again, I'm very well organized and very well planned person. So I always send out reminders uh, to the people I'm working with, hey, just trying to communicate with you. Um, uh, are we still on schedule that we, are, we will be seeing the first cut on this particular day at 10 a.m. or something, you know, at my house or whatever. So, you know, communicating those things in periodically keeps them, you know, uh, on their toes. They know that, okay, I, I already committed that, so let me try and keep my commitment. Well, this is so yeah. this has been so interesting i mean there's so much more involved than i mean both elizabeth and i have, have acted in films but it's just it's it's so much more involved on the pre-production side than i really knew you know you kind of go and they go stand there do that whatever but you don't right. realize kind of all the background so it makes it very clear that i never want to make my own small <laughs> film really i was going to say we should make one on a all low right. budget <laughs> <laughs> so one one last thing then you've got your film it's right. done you're happy then what do you do okay so yeah uh one point right before that um when you see your first cut um that the editor came up with and then you see the entire film and as the director of the film you see how, your how that fits in with your vision Okay, and there will always definitely be some adjustments. You were like, you know, what you have done is great, but I would still like to see this, uh, you know, this uh, step four that I had in my storyboard. I don't see it. And probably he or she will explain that, you know, I cut that out because it wasn't flowing well, but you were like, no, no, I definitely want that in the scene that adds a different meaning to it. And she's like, yeah, sure, I will put that in and stuff so you that's when you see the first cut of the film you communicate with your editor and hopefully majority of the you know things will be solved because you they you will put down you know every single point these are the all the adjustments i would like you to do then they will come up with the second set of adjustments 
and you sit down with them again, you see the entire film. And hopefully this time there will be very small, minor adjustments. That sound, I didn't like the, you know, it was not loud enough, that this, this place, it was too loud or whatever. Then those minor adjustments, you, you send out those minor adjustments to the relevant people. And then hopefully the third cut, when you see you were like, okay, that's great. Or either the third or the fourth one will be the final one for you. And you were like, okay, that's perfect. I love it. This is my film. Right. So when you, you are completely happy with the film, what do you do with it? Short films are generally people make short films for film festivals. Mm. You don't make money out of short films. There might be a couple of platforms where you can sell short, uh, sh uh, short films. Um, but again, you'll probably earn a, a small amount of money. And that's generally not the purpose why you are making a short film. Short film is your platform to move on to the bigger picture of making a feature film. Okay. And how do you do that? You need uh, producers, you need investors who will invest in your money. Um, and you, you, you probably don't know any of them. If you would know, you would, you would be already making a feature film. Mm -hmm. But how do you know them? You know them by putting your, a short film in film festivals. So depending on the type of short film you, ha you have made, comedy, drama, thriller, um, gangster, horror, whatever, then you do a full research on um, you know, what are the quality uh, film festivals in America or across in, in like across the globe, if you know you can submit it to them, and then maybe you come up with 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 ten or something because every single film festival submission will cost you money, so you cannot send it out to you know thousand. It it has to be a limited number, and then all of those have to be well researched out. Okay, what I like to do because I'm based in Los Angeles, I would choose majority from Los Angeles. I will choose a few in New York City uh, because that's another great place for networking. There are a lot of filmmakers in New York City. And I will choose a, a few across America um, that are very prestigious fil uh, film festivals. I don't submit anything out of America because right now I, I, I'm not in a position to travel okay, financially and you know, even family-wise. Um, so I generally stick inside America and then I will submit my film to all of those festivals. And wherever your film gets accepted, um, you, your target should be to go and attend. The film is getting screened, is not good enough. People will see it, they will love it. Some people will love it, but how do they communicate that to you? Will they take the pain to actually read the pamphlet and find out your information and write and shoot an email to you? Well, very unlikely. So. Your target is wherever your film is screening, you are present at that at that place. In the opening night party, you are networking, you are mix, mixing up with people, you are telling them, hey, my film is screening Saturday at three o'clock. Please, can you can you come? And maybe many times what I do, I make a small flyer with the you know poster of the film and uh, a little information, what time, which theater, and I will just pass it along. Please make sure, please come. Okay, and then they will, oh, that looks very interesting. Junk DNA. Wow, I see a weird looking scientist. <laughs> I'm gonna go and check it out. First, they, they will probably be interested, some of them. And then next thing they have to come show up in the theater and watch the film. Okay, then they know what where you stand, what quality you have. Is that the right type of person? Uh, um, right type of actor or filmmaker or um, script writer, they wanna, you know, they wanna go, you know, go go ahead with. They have some other type of, you know, genre or thoughts in their head. Some of them will be interested. They're like, oh wow, I love that film. What is the next project you are working on? And that's how in the for Junk DNA it was. Um, we, I got the award at um, Houston. International Film Festival, it's called World Fest, Houston International Film Festival. I was at Houston attending the festival, and this is exactly how I networked with a few people, and there was a gentleman, he's like, what is the next project you are working on? I said, I'm working on a curry western. He's like, what? Curry western? I'm like, yeah, it has never been made before. 
we all know about spaghetti westerns but hey here is a curry western here is an uh, indian guy who comes actually from india and he is in the wild west trying to figure out how to survive in the brutal wild west and then he falls in love with the wife of the most notorious outlaw how does he survive how does he continue his his love and you know uh, how does he make a living in the west that's my story about he's like i love it send me the synopsis and since right. then we had been talking and hopefully we will be going forward with the production and stuff so that's how you network that's the purpose just out of curiosity my last Absolutely. question on this uh because we need to wrap it up and yeah. you have given us such a great overview oh, but is yeah. this going to be is your curry western going to be another short or are you looking to no do it's, it's a feature film oh it's so exciting wow congratulations that is really exciting yeah I look this forward has to been that. so perfect i mean this is like this is like a, a class the best like <laughs> Really, because it's so precise. So thank you so much. Yeah, now, thank you. As our listeners know, we always end with the best thing we learned this week. And the best thing I learned this week, uh, there's been a lot of talk on the web and here in this program about AI um, art and how to use AI art and sometimes in writing. Well, they have come out with a new AI program. It's called and Dolly 2 is the big AI art thing. And this is called the Dolly 2 of biology because what this does is they can, they have a new AI that generates novel proteins using the same technique that Dolly uses to generate images. So you can just put in, like they were, they can even do proteins that spell out the alphabet, you know, in their, if they put them in their protocols for what they're looking for. So this is, I mean, this changes, it's like science for the art thing. It's just like, wow. That, so that was my best thing I learned. This That's week. pretty cool. I'll have to yeah. all look that up. Um, yeah, I can send you some of the, some of the stuff. Oh, just look up Dolly to a biology too. Maybe but. stick a link below so other people can look who are listening to this too. That would be great. Cause I will yeah. stick the link below. Um, mine this week is just a very, you know, I often, Koshik, look for things the morning of because I collect them, but then in between I lose them because I'm not always organized enough. And so this morning I found this sweet dog who had been used as a bait dog. So he was a bait dog in a pit bull mix, North Carolina, had lost an ear because of it. So his name is Van Gogh. And Van Gogh was having trouble. He was taken up by a, an organization to foster, but they were having trouble finding him a home. So they did a whole one of those. They stuck blobs of paint under plastic and then stuck like peanut butter on the plastic. So he licks the and he creates paintings. They found him a forever home, but the paintings continue to sell and they are was like happily forever rescue makes the money off of the paintings. So very sweet little dog. Very sweet story. So that was my happy news. Good. Oh, we can put a link to that too, so people can see. These oh, we great could. Works of yes. Art. What That's a good what idea! I'm going to do next time I paint. I'm just going to put peanut butter on my hands and lick it and see what happens. So, Koshik, do you have something to share? What I learned this week is that the temperature in Los Angeles is going down to 48. I know. I'm in LA too. Like, so, how is that possible? <laughs> <laughs> and we're getting rain tomorrow. Good yes, rain. We are. We're supposed to get good rain. So that's very <laughs> exciting. That's good news for California. Good news. Well, thank you so much for joining thank us you. and yeah. sharing uh, all this information. I know there's it's going to be so helpful to so many people. And thank you also for our wonderful producer, Maria Korloff. We couldn't do it without you. And our editor, Alex Korloff. Yes, thank you. You two are terrific. And Metastellar Magazine is an online magazine. And if you would like to support us, because we do original fiction, you can visit our Patreon page. And all the money that we get there goes to paying our writers for their original fiction. And we are a genre magazine. So we do horror, science fiction, and fantasy. And you can look us up online and read some of the stories. So until next time, thank you, Koshik. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. And we'll see you next time.
Thank, Thank you guys for inviting me. Let's oh, support okay. Better Stellar. <laughs> yes, support us. Thank yes. you. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Bye. -bye.